Good people copy, but great people steal. The thing about it though, if you start with a bad recipe, it's normally going to still taste like shit. You're here with Mark Powell at PerfectGardens.com. If you haven't checked out our monthly membership, I highly recommend to do so. Just for $2.99, your questions get sent to the top for quick replies. And if you haven't heard, I was recently sent a cease and desist order threatened with a lawsuit if I didn't take down my review against Clean Cleaner. I'm asking for a little more support to build up my war chest so that I can continue to keep giving you open and honest reviews and we can further defend our right for free speech. Thank you so much, everyone. So up here at the top, I'm going to be playing a video time loop showing you the difference between Lost Coast Plant Therapy and Green Cleaner. All I simply did was the two glass speakers in the center are material I actually already shook up and have allowed it to sit and separate. And then the ones you're seeing to the far side is I'm barely pouring them both in and you can actually see what they look like when they you're initially supposed to shake it and then mix it in. The reason why I'm trying to actually show you the what it looks like is because if you haven't checked out the video of all the questions where they were saying that I was wrong around why using sodium lauryl sulfate and so sodium citrate and all the other chemicals. Well, I think you can clearly see here that I wasn't wrong, the reasons why they're most likely using it. And again, this is my opinion, but I wanted to go over there and actually buy a bottle and see what it looked like. The reason why I wanted to see what it looked like was because I realized from years ago when I was trying to make some of my own products and just kind of get more into my that field of stuff was on the EPA 25B list, to my understanding, once you're approved on that list, you're required to list every single single active and inactive ingredient. And if I remember straight, and I actually got to call the EPA, and I actually got to call over there and ask them, but if I remember straight, you're not allowed to put stuff into your stuff unless it's listed. The issue I find though is that I don't see a green dye listed on the EPA 25B list when you're on the approved pesticide list. The reason why I initially started with that go quote on good people copy, great people steal is because there was a rumor in the industry that someone actually called me and said, hey, Mark, did you hear that plant therapy actually copied or reverse engineered the green cleaner nutrient line and took their business by basically dropping the price? I was like, OK, this is really interesting. So I actually wanted to go over there and check out the product. And I bought one of their 12 ounce bottles. Still kind of expensive. It was about 28 bucks. And I actually wanted to see what their color was on their products. And when you actually pour it side by side, you can actually just see the green dye, or I don't want to call it a green dye. This is just the, whatever pigment it is, is in that product. And you can see there is the sodium lauryl sulfate. And actually I poured out hundred ml because you can actually see when it lets it sit for a while, all the different chemicals that are in there because they're going to separate. And I was talking about this, right? Because you needed a surfactant and you needed binders to kind of keep them all together so that they weren't just separating quickly. And that was what, from my original opinion that I hadn't looked at this product for over 10 years. I actually was just looking at the chemicals on the bottle, researching the chemicals and figuring out what they were used for right there with you guys. And then from understanding why they were being used in other industries, I formulated my own viewpoint and opinion over the situation. I have a story coming up with my father talking about actually why our industrial farming techniques use chlorine on food. I should definitely recommend to subscribe to check out that video because the reason why we use chlorine on food is because my father, I won't get into this video, but the point to this is that through the four decades of being in big ag and learning from my father and witnessing these things, we began to realize that it was not ethical to use some of the chemicals that were used in the products. I don't know if you guys remember, I would actually love to talk to a company if any of you guys were involved in this situation or this affected you back in 2015, 2016 when the pesticide, the Guardian came out, right? I think they were using Eagle 20 or something like like that in it and there ended up being a huge recall on all the products that were in Colorado if I remember straight. I don't know how many other states that this pesticide affected although they were selling it as actually an all natural product and let me show you what I'm talking about. They were actually selling the Guardian as an all natural product but there was chemicals in here that weren't approved and basically when you end up flipping through these and I'll make sure to include the links or you could just google it Guardian pesticide scandal back in 2016 you'll see actually how many different a lot were affected. If you go through each of these stories, it talks about stories from different farmers literally losing their entire livelihoods over this. There was 92 lots right here, uh, 16 batches right here. I mean, I, I remember hearing a story of there was like over $10 million
million dollars of inventory recalled. And this is my point to this entire situation, right? Is that there are these types of pesticides and fungicides could actually be used for actual real things like tomatoes or pumpkins or maybe something that has a hard shell that you could wash this stuff off. And again, this is one of the questions where they said that there's no residuals. But again, I'm showing you right here that there's actually a separation of all these different types of chemicals in their products. And when there's a separation, each of these things have different boiling points. And it's hard for me to believe that there's no residual when it's being sprayed on your plants or recommend to be sprayed on multiple times throughout the week from veg all the way through to flowering. My point to this is that it's okay to, to spray it, like I said, because you, you have the ability to wash it off. But our plants, they're herbs. You don't want to use a degreaser, something like sodium lower sulfate, which is a degreaser. You don't want to put a degreaser on your plants, guys. Especially what you want is that oil on those plants, right? I mean, really think about it, guys, for a second. Why would you be putting a solvent, which is the alcohol, that is not actually the cleanest alcohol and, and is not recommended to be used on the extraction side? So why would you use an alcohol like that initially? Why would you use a pesticide that has an alcohol that isn't used on the extraction side? That's my first question to you guys. The isopropic alcohol. I know that's just a small part, but I'm just bringing it up. The second thing is, why do you want to put degreaser like sodium lauryl sulfate onto your plants? Yeah, it kills the bugs. Although in my mind, it makes no sense to put a soap on your plants that's going to have residuals. I mean, think about it, guys. The way, every time you wash your hands, how many times, how long do you have to keep your plants under the water to wash all that soap off your hands when you when you squirt it on your hands? I know that might be a bad example because that's a large amount of soap, but still, there's residual on your hands until it's washed off. When I actually look at the plant therapy, actually that product, bull products, I wouldn't recommend using on, on herb plants where you're trying to extract the essential oils. Other plants, maybe. But when I look at them both, when I compare them side by side, because they're both on the EPA 25B approved list, I would actually say that the plant therapy is actually a better product. Why? Because I don't see a dye in there. I actually just see the chemicals. Sodium lauryl sulfate, I see the different types of oils, the essential oils. I, I can actually smell the alcohol, the peppermint. And again, I'm not promoting it. I'm not recommending it. But at the end of the day, when I see a product that probably has a higher integrity, where you're going through a testing process, you're actually going to to identify what chemical is coming from where, I would have to actually say that the plant therapy might be a better product just because I think they're using less chemicals in there overall. And they're actually being straight up with you too. They're saying soap right there. I just don't think anyone's really thinking about the types of plants we're growing and our intended purpose. I think they're just thinking about solving their problem and gaining their inventory out, but they're not thinking about lowering the integrity of the product because of the chemicals that they're putting on to once again, solve the problem. Again, guys, maybe I make it a big deal here, but I am trying to solve us from issues like what we ran through in 2016. I'm old school. I know I'm a younger guy, but I'm old school. I went through all this shit. All of my growers didn't have these issues because I was finding products that was in line with our values and I was being a filter for them. Although I know there's a few other people that this ended up being a big issue for. I remember hearing about this almost like kind of collapsing the, the industry out there in Colorado and just destroying a whole bunch of businesses. I'm doing my best to bring up certain types of issues that ha could have an integrity issue. To my understanding, if you're put on the 25B approved list, you have to list absolutely everything. I don't know what this blue stuff is, but I don't see it on the list. I'm not saying I'm right on all my opinions on this product, although I do think I have some valid questions that should be answered. If I remember straight, the owner of this company went to prison for a few years. First comes experimentation, then comes litigation, then comes regulation. Instead of suing me, I think all of the growers out there that have been using Green Cleaner on their products, because at the end of the day, you got you to gotta understand that's why I'm here. I'm here for the growers. You guys are responsible for what you put onto your plants. And if you fail any of the tests, and I know that the sodium lauryl sulfate is on the approved list, so they're not going to ping you for it. But if there's other things in the bottle that's not supposed to be in that bottle, you're liable for putting it into your product. Green Cleaner, instead of suing me, brother, I think the growers out there might end up having a legal issue with you guys. So I would suggest you keep your money and keep your lawyer prepared for the defense. I am here for the growers. Okay, guys, I did want to make a couple corrections because after digging through the Green Cleaner Company, I ended up making a few discoveries. So they, on their bottle, actually have an asterisk right here on the soybean. I ended up getting this label 
from Green Cleaner, I believe from their actual website, as you can see it right here. There was no asterisk, so I didn't see the organic label. On one of my previous videos, I actually put right here, why don't they put organic? So when you actually go to the Green Cleaner website and look at their safety and data sheet, you will actually scroll down and see the asterisk right here. It says soybean oil comes from organic grown. So just to be very clear, guys, it does come from organic source at some level. I ended up actually being pretty close on the rest of the stuff on the percentages because I didn't find this in the beginning. My question is, though, why would a label be printed ever that didn't have the asterisk with the organic at some point? So which does make me think possibly that it might not have started organic, but then it may be possibly moving to organic. Either way, again, this is me just trying to identify things, see what's going on and sniff out the bullshit. Thank you so much. Have a great grow, everyone. So Mo makes chemical reactions water soluble through cation exchanges. Basically, it's adding a positive charge. Mo plays a large part in the oxidation process and is why it is linked to more than 60 other coenzyme reactions in biology.